I want to welcome to the program uh, a really interesting guy. I can't wait to, to talk to him here and get to know him a little bit better. You've already been in here for two minutes, and you've given us just gifts, and I mean, this is starting out well. It's, it's Zach Nunn, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? It's a privilege to be on the variety program, as it were. So, yeah. yes. Good, this is going to be the good Heartland episode, I can already tell. It is. It is. And you yeah. are Iowa through and through, my man. I had sixth generation, you know, cheering sheep. I got, I got the scars from the detasseling. It's like, that's how you know you've been in the Midwest. Yeah. Well, yeah. G- give me a, like, how do we detassel? How do we how do we go? So yeah, the, the the crazy part of the detasseling piece is it, it's a way to round up a bunch of ten year olds and put them on a school bus, ship them out, and then send them into cornfields and hope they come out on the other side. And <laughs> you're, you're you're bending over um, corn stalks and you're you're pulling off the the top of them as you go through here, but. Uh, yeah, it's actually a great experience. It's it's about a million degrees, <laughs> and uh, you can't see the other side of the field, and uh, bugs everywhere, and all of your friends are somewhere in the same cornfield, and all you can do is just hear their screams. So you know, it's like, <laughs> all right. You just got to work right, your just, way just, to the other exactly, end. Exactly, exactly. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's great. So you're running for Congress. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's Iowa 3, so this is a chance to win back all of Iowa. Iowa is one of these, you know, it's a traditionally purple state. And uh, that's what I love about our community. Uh, you've got Republicans, Democrats, Independents, all very pragmatic, you know, farm type right. family people who are saying we just want solutions. Um, but this third district is new. It uh, was uh, designed by an independent commission in Iowa. So we have arguably one of the fairest redistricting processes in the world. Uh, I think even the economists said that. So salute that's amazing. To, salute yeah. to our yeah. UK brothers there. Um, Generally speaking, independent commissions are not so independent. So that's this, exactly is, right. this is something this else. Is, yeah, yeah. Half, half Democrats, half Republicans. And uh, then the, the state legislature gets to vote on it. Um, in, in this district, it is... Uh, a district that has a you know kind of a reflection of the United States. It's Des Moines, which is the largest city in Iowa. Uh, just about half the population is there around the immediate area, and then a lot of rural Main Street communities. And we're not talking small towns. We're talking these are Main Street, the the winter sets of the world, the Atumwas of the world, uh, Red Oaks, where Senator Joni Ernst is from. Yeah. It's the kind of place where not only do you walk around the town square, but you send your kids to school here, you grow up here, you go to 4-H here, uh, and you, you come back there for Thanksgiving. So these are thriving little communities, um, but they're spread out across southern Iowa. And uh, within that area, we have seen Donald Trump has won it. Democrats ha- have won it at the local level. And uh, it's been a battleground state, totally. uh, particularly this district. It's gone although, back and forth. Although I feel like we're heading in the right direction, don't you? I, I do. I do. Uh, you know, I'm a military guy, so four months on the battlefield, that's a, that's a long time. <laughs> that's an Air Force deployment, if you will. <laughs> right. Uh, four months in politics can be forever. And yeah. we're not taking anything for granted here. Um, governor Terry Branstead, Ambassador Branstead, longest serving governor in U.S. history, always says run like your 10 points down uh, yeah. and then hopefully on election day you cross the finish line yeah well it's good advice and you've had a lot of good leadership on the republican side in iowa over the years i mean it is at this point i mean we went out there last year the state fair man we just it was so interesting to see the development of a bench in iowa over the last six eight years where you've got talented folks like yourself ready waiting and and willing to go and serve and it that's i mean that's the best way to success in this game i think the republican party has worked really hard at this but it's also just a reflection of yeah that midwest community right uh, we've got a lot of military guys who are serving you've got senator Joni ernst first yeah. combat female veteran in Cong- or in the u.s senate um we've got ashley henson up to the north miller meeks to our east and randy feenstra in the west so we've got a good delegation the challenge is these are also i mean they're pragmatic uh leaders who have voted on issues both sides and then we've got this one democrat who votes 100 percent of the time with nancy pelosi <laughs> yeah and, and goes completely west coast on us <laughs> and this is cindy axney we're talking about here that's right yeah so she's been in there twice um she's never won by more than 50 percent it's a, one of these uh, districts that i think she won her first time by 49 percent her second time by 48 percent 6,000 votes i got more votes in my state senate race ahead of her in the same district than she won an overall congressional race by well that's a good sign it's encouraging right yeah Yeah. so we we are looking forward to fighting hard most importantly though we're, we're doing this because we feel very strongly that our community deserves a voice in this all 21 counties not just the one county that she's won but all 21 deserve a voice in washington dc and most importantly I think what we've done well in Iowa has been to listen to people, 
cut taxes, put money in Iowans pockets, they spend it in their community. You know, support the police, don't defund the police. Get kids back in school, we're the first state to do it. Uh, seems this seems simple. to work, seems right? It's pretty simple, right? Let's, let's take what works in the Midwest to the, the D.C. Beltway. No See kidding, no kidding. Well, you got your work cut out for you on that, but let's, let's start at the beginning here. You're an Air Force guy. Yes, sir. So uh, started off in the um, uh, indentured servitude of Chuck Grassley, like everybody in Iowa, I think, at one point, uh, working in the back office, opening letters, love Chuck, and then uh, went on to serve in the U.S. Air Force, uh, joined up in 2003, post 9-11. Um, 9-11 happened, you know, it, as I was in school, um, saw the towers come down and immediately felt like we had a compelling yeah. uh, desire to follow, like my grandfather's before me and um, my father in the Air Force. So we, we joined up, uh, became part of an Airborne Recon Squadron. Um, it's uh, basically, if you've seen Top Gun, yeah. you, you know how the music starts, and you've got these cool fighter pilots. The Air Force Recon program is exactly the same, except take out the fighter jet and put in a giant school bus flying <laughs> in the sky <laughs> and, uh, and play the entire Top Gun soundtrack I was just in slow-mo. Say, can you still get Kenny Loggins? <laughs> I know, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's the key. We, we would play it every time we would take off. I went to the danger zone taking you just off. You have to a, exactly. flip like seven switches <laughs> and then throw Loggins <laughs> exactly, on right. and right there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We're school there. bus exactly. or nothing. Yeah, yeah, I love absolutely. that. So, I mean, you were in Afghanistan and Iraq, right? Yeah, we did multiple tours in both. Um, and, you know, as a, as a young lieutenant getting to fly, a uh, huge opportunity. But we were on the back with a, a group of enlisted guys. And these guys had what we call cans on their head, headphones. And they're interpreting real-time Pashtu, Farsi, Tijak. And they're trying to put it all together. Jeez. And our job was to be able to geolocate who the command and control nodes were. The guys talking on the radios on what we call a push-to-talk, trying to identify who's vectoring fire in. I mean, it was one of our first missions out. We were supporting a special operations team. They came under immense fire in the Punjab Valley. About 2,000 Talibans came out of the hill, uh, firing down on these guys, and we were the only aircraft in the area. And God bless these young men and women Americans in the back of this aircraft at 20,000 feet, trying to identify who were the strike notes, who were the guys calling in uh, the firing commands on the Jeez. Afghan side. And it, it pains me to say, but as an Air Force guy, we had to call in the Navy for strikes. And so we had some, <laughs> some F-18s show up. And, but we stayed on mission for, I mean, going on 20 hours, wow. three air refuelings. Mm. And we were the only thing providing basically a canopy of uh, freedom for these guys trapped in the valley. And uh, we were able to take them out. It, it was intense. It was yeah. very intense. And you hear the guys on the ground. We heard our Afghan interpreter screaming out, fi- danger, close fire. We heard the JTAC, who's the, you know, the guy who's helping vector things in. But there were also innocent Afghanis in the area, too. So not everybody who's talking on a radio, I mean, it's, it's their version of the party line. Everybody's on these things is a bad guy. So you've got to figure out who's the, the kid with a bunch of goats hurting. And wow. then who's the mullah out there who's directing people to lay down fire on Americans? Jeez. The complexity um, of war, yeah. man. That is just unbelievable. Good news is every American made it home that night. And um, we were able to, you know, get back into the area and uh, help all those people the following week. So it... It was a great mission. I wish they were all that good. No kidding. Right. No kidding. How long were you in theater? Uh, so let's see here. Uh, of my four years, I was officially um, stationed in the United Kingdom. So I uh, started night class there, and I did three years basically back and forth between Afghanistan, Iraq. Uh, we would base out of uh, Al-UD Air Base in Qatar for the long hauls for the aircraft. And then continued my career on. Um, Left active duty, switched over to the reserves, joined the intelligence community for a decade, uh, spent time you know, in China doing counterintelligence, worked the Russia desk. Um, this is a guy yeah. we need in Congress, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? I mean, boy, that's quite yeah. a resume right yeah. there. That's yeah. incredible. Well, so uh, out of all of that, I got to imagine that shapes your perspective in a pretty serious way. And we ask everybody who comes in here uh, who served in our arms, armed forces and is now running for Congress, was the Afghan situation was the pullout the biden absolute catastrophe sort of instrumental in your decision to run pivotal pivotal i would say yeah um you know so flash forward from that that scene we just had in in 2005 in afghanistan to basically a year ago next month the fall of afghanistan and leave behind the disaster of bagram air base and the billions of dollars thrown over there were americans and there were our interpreters Mm -hmm. who were left behind. The flag came down and they had no way to get to the airport. And so uh, a colleague of mine, Jesse Jensen, who's actually running now uh, out west, and a number of veterans got together and formed this group called Task Force Argo. That night, 
Um, we were trying to get people through Abbey Gate, and sadly, 13 Americans died. Hmm. Men and women, Marines, uh, Navy corpsmen, one of them from my district in, in Red Oak, hmm. gave his life because no one in the administration came up with an evacuation plan that would work. Oof. And yeah. so we... Um, talked to some folks uh, who were trapped there, and we shuttled them. Um, this is after the U.S. had pulled out. We shuttled them um, north to Maza Sharif, which was one of the last free airports left in Afghanistan. We worked with a group called Cam Air, which is the Afghan National Airlines. They had not been subsumed into the Taliban yet. And to raise money across America to be able to fly out 2,500-plus Americans and um, Afghan nationals who had served with us who had been approved to come to the United States but had been abandoned in Kabul yes. when the U.S. pulled out. And so we had literally U.S. citizens that had no escape route out of Afghanistan. You were their only that We break. were flying out as volunteers. It yeah. wasn't even I – mean, we were calling State Department and saying – I remember being on the desk with the NMC, the National Military Command Center, and trying to get State Department to help validate this. And they're like, "You can't fly out of the country. We aren't. We're not giving you clearance over Iran. There's no way out." <laughs> like, well, thanks, friend. Yeah, planes in the air. We're we're gonna land at Al Udeed. Yeah, we we're gonna I, figure I, it I out. I literally have. Yeah, exactly. We we've, we've literally got the the uh, control tower on the phone. The, these aircraft are landing. We vetted them all before they got on the aircraft. When they were met there, they were met by, God bless the Department of Defense. They were there. They were vetting them. They were checking them. Uh, no one who was not supposed to be on the aircraft was. And I'm very happy to say, you know, the interpreter who did nine combat tours with us is a U.S. citizen. He lives in my community now. His is brother, that right? We got him out. He fought wow. with the Americans. Yeah, he and his kids there. And that's they're some awesome. of the best Americans you're ever going to meet. That wow. is just an awesome story. They need. So I think, you know, number one is obviously congressional investigations we still haven't had on, you know, this whole withdrawal. But then I think, you know, the number one thing I'd want to see after that is some mo a movie, some a movie about this kind people, of thing. Right. Who yeah. went back in to get interpreters out. Yeah. You know, America's you want to say to the out. State Department that you're on the horn with, like, I wouldn't be here if you did your job, folks. Absolutely right. And individually, I will say this is a great reflection. There are some truly patriotic Americans in our U.S. government on our veteran side. But this is a dark chapter for America. Totally. Yeah. I mean, we, we had the opportunity to move forward with honor. Uh, and we yeah. chose dishonor. A hundred percent. Couldn't couldn't be more well said. So this happens. Obviously, it shapes your perspective quite a bit. And you decide it's your time to run for Congress. Yes, sir. Um, I assume you consult with your family and your <laughs> kids and everybody else about what that means, right? Yeah. No. So, like, my wife and I, we knew each other in high school. Uh, we met on the gridiron out there on a Friday night. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. You, you were playing football? I, I was in the marching band. So, <laughs> it, 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 all I'm saying is we were on the football on field the on a Friday gridiron. night on the gridiron. I so set you up yeah, on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah so we, we, I was in the marching band. She was far more attractive than me. Uh, <laughs> and so I decided, you know, I'm just going to I'm gonna ask this lady out. Nice, blonde, beautiful woman. Um, it just took me 16 years to get up the courage. And you, then, you finally yeah, shot yeah, the shot? Yeah, okay, I, I said, hey, let's do this. Let's, let's hang out. Let's hang out. And she said, yeah, she was a single mom. So she had two great little kids, and uh, I was still stationed in D.C. working in the intelligence community. Uh, brought her out to live in D.C., and immediately was like, yeah, this is a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is absolutely not where you want to raise two kids. We're going back. We're, we're going back to our hometown. So we moved back to our hometown, and we've been there ever since. We love it. Oh, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, look, you, you always had a little bit of a taste for politics, as evidenced by being Grassley's ma yeah, mail room, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, did you did you ever think you'd run for something, or is this is this like something that you just felt compelled to do? Yeah, I think it was much more compelled to do. I was always like very impressed with guys like Chuck Grassley, but yeah. I you know you see the stamina that it takes to be out there and be on a staff, and um, I was much more of the military mindset. I want to go out there and accomplish things. I want to drive a mission. I want to see an objective. Politics seemed like the opposite of all that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, um, but it did foster us. You know, we ran our first race against the guy that owned, you know, the country club in town. It was a Democrat in a Democratic district. And that it was like, hey, Zach, you're kind of a dumbass. What, <laughs> what, what is going on? Why are you running? Did they nix you from the country club list? Yeah, is that I know. That was the hard part. It was like, hey, you're, you're a Republican and you were not allowed in the country club. It's, <laughs> it's a tough, tough walk in life. <laughs> Luckily, I had all my detasseling scars. So yeah. it was like, I wasn't getting it anyway. Um, great. Yeah, but it was, we ended up running. We, we talked to independents. We talked to Republicans. We talked to my mother, who's the Democrat, and uh, my teachers who, who knew us. And we ended up winning that race by, you know, 14 percentage points. Yeah. And, and we, we kind of continued that trend. Um, but we also never gave up 
on like who we were, where our principles were. We didn't compromise on the things that were important to us. I remember being a freshman on the Ways and Means Committee, and they wanted us to raise the fuel tax, and I'd just gotten in there, and they spent a lot of money on us, uh, getting us in there being a Democrat. And I was like, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Luckily, the House Speaker was a, an Air Force guy at the time, so he gave me some grace on this. He was yeah. like, I'm not voting for that. <laughs> like, Zach, you're going to vote for it. That's how this works. And I was like, yeah, it's not my district. That's not how I vote. He's like, That's good. Okay, well, hey, thanks for your time. You're off the Ways and Means Committee. <laughs> Is that right? You got oh, eaves? Bo- booted immediately. Imme- wow. uh, so within the first month, I was booted off Ways and Means. They passed... Uh, the tax hike, uh, you know, in retrospect, probably a bad move. Yeah. But um, and then the speaker comes to me. He's like, "You were always honest with me. You were always transparent. I can't be mad at you." That's all he can. You're ask back for. on the committee, and he put me back on after that. So I, it's a salute, really, to him. Um, you know, being willing to say like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna." recognize that people are going to be from different parts, but we're going to move forward as a team. Well, you're going to have a lot of opportunity in Congress. Hey. I mean, that's that. this is a, a common phrase, right? I mean, every day you're going to be faced with a tough decision. That's right. I'm pretty convinced, based on your uh, background, that you're going to be pretty solid in that regard, though. It, here's what I like about it. We um, um, met with some of the other guys who and gals who are running, all have incredible backgrounds. There is not a person right now on the Republican side in this freshman class who I wouldn't be like, this is a guy or a gal that I would jump in a foxhole with and fight the good fight with. Uh, they are sharp. A lot of them are military. We, as you've noted before, this is the first time we've had so many military members totally. running. They have diverse backgrounds. I mean, we have Air Force guys and Navy guys. <laughs> and we've got Marine women. And we've got people um, you know, of all faiths, all creeds, all ethnicities running. Um, but most importantly, I think what I like about having a military cadre who is willing to step up and run is that when you get in there, it's not just about winning on November 8th. Right. It's about governing on January 2023. And we have got to be able to say, there's the hill. Here's our mission. Let's go take the hill. Totally right. Absolutely. So let me ask you about a couple of the issues I'm sure you're facing. I mean, clearly inflation is, is number one nationwide. I got to imagine in your district, people are feeling it badly. You know, We've got six kids now. We've got the two foster kids as well. And uh, what I always say is Tesla doesn't make a minivan. And that means <laughs> I'm filling up at the pump 100 bucks a week. And they've got to get to daycare. They've got to get to school. The challenge here is, is that, like a lot of working families, there is no relief in sight. And yeah. so God bless that the gas came down a penny. But that's not what is going to make sure that I get to uh, you know take my kids out for pizza or no we're having ramen again. No kidding. Um, these, these are the things that are impacting families across Iowa. It pulls my district upwards of you know forty percent, um, but the challenge is you turn on the news and all we hear about is climate change. Uh, yeah. Like, hey, I can't get in a, a, an electric tractor, or <laughs> I'm not going to charge my F-150 for eight hours in the middle of winter so that I can do harvest time or take care of, take care of hogs. So you don't think Joe Biden's thoughtful articulation of his gas <laughs> is working in Iowa? I, I don't know. I, he, he, came, he came out, he's like, yeah, ethanol works. We'll give you a three-month extension for one year. I was like, <laughs> thank you, Mr. President. That covers about 1% of what we need. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing how out of touch these guys are, right? And I, I really think that on some level, they're happy to see this happen. I mean, they won't say that publicly. No, I agree. On their version of, yeah, yeah, Pod Save America, they're secretly talking about before the mic comes on. He's like, this is the way we make America green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, look, we've said for forever, when your policy as articulated in your campaign is to shut down fossil fuels right. in America, and right. basically just negate our production whatsoever. And that's what they told us. Yeah. What the hell do they think was going to happen? Uh, well, you're absolutely right. And it's not even fossil fuels. It's say, hey, if you do not follow a Green New Deal that is basically batteries only. I mean, Iowa, my district has more wind power than any other district in America right now. Huh. We, we have really bought into this. We are doing biofuels. We are doing, you know, renewable energy. We've got a, a giant solar aspect. But it's not, and it, it's got to be an all of the above solution here. And this is where I say 19 months ago, America was energy independent. I have flown enough missions over the Persian Gulf and I have seen the giant traffic jam of fuel tankers being lined up that the U.S. military is providing protection to so that we can get a fraction of that while the rest of the world gets it at taxpayer costs being shipped to China and, and all over Southeast Asia. Totally. We can do this here domestically, cleaner, better, quicker, and it's going to grow a lot of our economies from everywhere from, you know, the shale lands in North and South Dakota to the cornfields of Iowa. It's exactly right. We, you know, we talked to a guy in Alberta, Canada, who was telling us about, you know, they had the whole Keystone Pipeline all set up and they right. shut that down on, on day one. And he's like, you know, what the craziest part about this, and I think about this because of the reception that you all get with ethanol in Iowa from these guys, is the reception of talking to an American or American aligned interest in providing energy 
is like nothing, right? They're just like, forget it, we're not interested. Yes. And then you see this guy roll over to Saudi Arabia, bended knee, bumping fists. Bumping fists. Right? Yep. I mean, as somebody who's over there, yep. like, I mean, this they may not have our best interests at heart. <laughs> right, right. But the one thing the Saudis do have is an EPA. <laughs> Everything. So it's regulated. Every, I'm sure. I'm sure it's all clean. Oil, <laughs> all right? clean. Exactly. It's like, yeah. No question. It yeah. has to be yeah, right. Exactly. Almost as good as Russian oil. Right. I mean, <laughs> that is filled with the tears of like. Yeah. yeah exactly. The Siberian prisoners. You, you know it's quality. So have you have you sent an invitation uh, to Kamala Harris and Joe Biden on behalf of City <laughs> X need to come explain all this? So yeah. we we ran a resolution on the floor of the Iowa Senate. I uh, you know it it, it didn't um, in Tice acts need to come back and spend some time with us. But it did say, let's have a candid conversation about what would work. And we laid out a number of recommendations on this. First amongst them was an all of the above solution has to start first. Uh, second is that we can't tax ourselves out through you know the increase on fuel out of being able to do the things that are most important. You want to talk about a supply chain issue. I can literally watch the corn grow across the field. But if I'm not able to afford it by going to the grocery store because of the costs that are come from harvesting, from being able to drive it to granary, from being able to ship it all over the country. We are a net producer of food, and with the tragedy that's going on in Ukraine right now, we're going to be a net provider to the world, hopefully. This is yeah. one of the great things America does. Right. We literally will feed the world, but if we can't even get it to a port to ship out anywhere, it will rot in the bin. Uh -huh. It will rot on the ship, and it will be a destabilizing force the world over. So let's so. talk some smack about acne. Acne. <laughs> So I, it, obviously she's just like lockstep with the Biden administration on everything, right? I mean, I think she breaks on certain things. She like, for example, she said all Iowans are Christian crazies who hide behind the cross or whatever. <laughs> I have not heard Biden say that yet. <laughs> now, now, maybe maybe he, she can convince him. I don't know. Um, it's a thoughtful nuance. It's a, it's a thoughtful nuance. Yeah. It's a thoughtful nuance. I mean, she's made 40 um, Stock Act violations while she sits on the Financial Oversight Committee. That's an amazing thing. Ma making some money on the side. Everybody yeah. loves a Hustle. Oh, listen, Speaker Pelosi's got a side hustle. I, you might as well. Exactly. Her and her husband. They can follow share some the lead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Better keep him out of a car at 2 a.m. Cool. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> no, listen, I think you got a hell of a good chance. And the good people of Iowa have been trending in our direction. You got a, the toughest district here. But it is, you know, I mean, we went to that state fair. We had the time of our lives. I mean, if you're going to the state fair and you're just surrounding yourself, which I imagine you will. We have 21 county fairs. So you think the state fair is great. You, you get out to Ringgold County State Fair, and uh, it's fantastic. I was just there last weekend. They literally, the kids all dress up their cow as their favorite costume. So we had the bovine bumblebee. Was the, <laughs> nice. the kids were dressed as flowers, and there was their cow with wings and a stinger on the tail. I was like, those are some brave kids. Yeah. If you got to pick something at the state fair to do and eat, what do you think that is? Oh, my God. Well, first, everything. Yeah, yeah, you, um, you got to. I, I mean, I we tried I, everything. You got to, you got to pace yourself. That's the most difficult part. You were a mess. I was a mess. <laughs> it's just too much, too much food. I had a pork chop. I had some pork chop. I had some like hot, like habanero it was sauce all over on your it. Face. I know it was oh. disgusting. Well, what can you do? It no. was good though. It was fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but that butter cow is something else too. But, yeah, I mean, what. What can you not make out of butter? That's actually should be the question. That's, I've talked to my concrete guys. So, like, hey. so Governor Reynolds actually brought us uh, butter infused pork fried pork sandwiches. Oh yeah, it's just the best thing I've ever had. It's yeah, incredible. she's amazing. She's amazing, yeah. right? Exactly. This I, is. I was like, we export a lot of great things from Iowa. I was like, Governor. I never want to export you to the White House. Yeah. Can, you, can you just stay here and lead our state to greatness? Yeah, seriously. She did a nice job for the State of the Union response. Though. She did. She did. she was firing on all cylinders. But it's also, it's, it's a powerful story to be able to tell. She's worked well with people across the aisle. Uh, she's worked well with parents, with yeah, educators. You guys have gotten a lot done. Largest tax cut in Iowa's history. Three times in the last, you know, six years, we have never gone over budget. We got kids back into school. We took the uh, mask mandate off and made it optional. Um, we've supported law enforcement. We had the strongest back the blue bill uh, go forward on this. We've supported um, everything when I was chair judiciary, uh, fighting human trafficking. We were the first ones to set up like, and we're not a border state, but we set up a, a national um, op center with state troopers in Iowa to be able to facilitate that. I, we're doing... We're doing the new Gingrich model. Do the 70% of things that all Americans agree on and yeah. do it well. Yeah, that's a great yeah. model to have. Yeah. 
So if you're going to pick a committee, I assume it's armed services, right? And is that number one? You know, I want to be able to serve my district. So I'm ag gonna, too. I think ag is a big area for yeah. us. Um, it's probably one of the most important things we can do. But also people forget Iowa. It's the insurance capital of America. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I suppose. You, you, you don't even think about it. But everything from, you know, crop insurance yeah. to, I mean, corporate insurance, home insurance. Des Moines is a great place for it. And short of derechos, uh, it's it's fairly <laughs> earth, earthquake derechos. proof. So. There is some weather. There is some weather. There is some weather. <laughs> There's nine that. months of winter. That, that, <laughs> that you know from Minnesota. <laughs> that can have a dampening effect. It, could, it definitely has a dampening <laughs> effect. Uh, listen, we love it. I got three questions for you. Yes, sir. First, I want to commit. Next time we go out to Iowa, you got you to gotta be with us because that's going to be a blast. Done. Uh, first question. Yes, sir. Your last meal on earth, what would it be? Well, we have highlighted it, but I would eat my way through the state fair. Yeah. I mean, I, one, I can extend myself for like 10 days of life <laughs> just by the amount of food I have to consume. And two, yeah. the executioner gets off free because by the end of it, I will be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really a two for win there. I'm, I'm going to go with everything at the state fair. That's as good Done. an answer as we've Done. had. That, that's solid. Yeah. All right. So let's do this. Usually this, this question is if you never got into public service, you know, what would you do with your life? let's take the last 20 years and just go sky blue. If, if you hadn't had service in the military, you hadn't sort of been in government at all, no politics, blue sky, you can do anything in the world that you want to do. What would it be? You know, I would have asked my wife out a lot sooner. That would be the first goal. <laughs> yeah. And um, you'd just be a stay at home dad. Just be a stay at home dad. I love our kids. We got six great kids. Um, I love what uh, service has gotten to do. So it still would have been something with service and the military afforded me a lot of hardships, but it also let me see the entire world. Yeah. And I learned a lot from that. It was probably the best way to uh, help focus my perspective. So something that allows me the opportunity to be with my family, see the world, I do whatever it is. Teach for America, uh, you know, go build trenches in, in Africa, uh, come back home and anything but detasseling. <laughs> I think that would, I'm glad I made a break there. I really glad, made an I, impact. I, 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 yeah. 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 I only had to do it a couple of times with my, uh, but yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, all right. This is, he knows what he doesn't want to yep, do. That's yep. for sure. All right. So last question. Um, we have a thrill of, of victory, agony of defeat question. We're, our view is that everybody's motivated by the one, one of two of those polls, right? Yeah, yeah. And the thrill of victory people are the consummate optimists charging up the hill, trying to get to the next thing. The agony of defeat person is like every victory that they've ever had, they enjoy for like one second. Yeah. But every defeat that they've ever had, they wear it like a backpack, vowing <laughs> never to repeat it, right? And that's what motivates them. Yeah. So given those two polls, Zach Nunn, where do you find yourself? It's a great question. Um, so I'm always going to be the, the victory guy, right? Uh, I think it, it only pays to be an eternal optimist. You fight like hell to make it that way. And when it doesn't work out, then you try and find the next one. Now, this is saying it as a guy who has not been elected to Congress. And yeah. so, <laughs> you could be coming. I, 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 I mean, I, I turn it around on you guys, seriously. Now that you, you've seen this from the D.C. perspective, I mean, what is it that motivates you? How do you guys see this? Well, I'm an agony of defeat guy. All around. I am. You, you, you've, you've got to have that. Ne every accomplishment, next fight, next every fight, accomplishment I've ever had, it's like, not good enough. this is fine. Yeah. And then yeah. every setback, it doesn't even matter how small. It can't be like a big, deep, <laughs> it can be like even a small one. It's just like a slight that I carry around forever. Yeah. And that's kind of what motivates me. I don't know. Duncan, you, you, you're definitely an agony of defeat guy. I'm definitely an agony of defeat guy. But you can turn it into a positive, you know? Yeah, right. I mean, what, it makes you work harder every day because you have something in nagging in the back of your head that it's a chip on the shoulder. Maybe it's sort of a Midwest thing. It's like you're, you know, maybe people are expecting you to fail yeah. and you just can't let that be true. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. true. And you'll have some of that when you yeah. get out here. Ashbrook, you're an agony guy. It, yeah, it, there's um, never been a definition of an agony guy more than this guy. 100% <laughs> agony of defeat. And, it's, and there's no bright side on that either. <laughs> it's just agony. I just, I just want more agony. I need, it. I need it. He's the kind of guy that makes something up bad just to motivate you. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. This will get me out of bed in the morning. Hammer. Boom. On hand. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, fair. Our, fair. Listen, this is one of the most important races that we have in America. And I'm not saying that because you're sitting here. It just is. If we're going to get to where we need to go, not in terms of majority, but also in terms of doing something right. with it, we got to win this race. So I'm going to give the, the punchline here, right? I mean, 
Every four years, people are looking at Iowa. We're praised by that. I like to think a lot of these guys who've been showing up for us and supporting us are here because of me. It's <laughs> probably not. It's the state fair. And maybe they want to be president. Charming as they Char- are. Charming as they are. <laughs> exactly. And we're glad to have them. More importantly, if we're going to win back a majority in Congress this January, we we have to win seats like this. You have to be able to knock off a number of incumbents to be able to have a majority that is not just a majority, but is a functional, governable form of government. You know, Section 1 of the Constitution places the responsibility on Congress to be the lead, the President, the Supreme Court, in a supporting role, but the House specifically. If we want a House that is a majority, it means being able to turn seats like this that are in the realm of the possible. Polling came out, and uh, you know, it shows us at 43-43. We're excited about that. So I've seen. So this is the absolute latest, right? Post poll. row, post. Uh, you know, the this Dobbs is hot decision. breaking news right. that we've got here. And and I was CD three. It's forty three forty three. And the most amazing part of that is you still got some work to do on your name ID. Yeah, I mean we're, we're a state senator. I like every state senator. You think everybody knows you? I knock on my neighbor's door. They're like, "Hey, thanks for thanks for bringing over the paper. Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> ah, I'm your neighbor. I happen to be your state senator. I've knocked on your door six other times. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's a it's it's a good problem to have at this stage in the game. You know, you got a lot of room to grow. I, and I think that that's the right yeah. the work right thing here it, she's got a ceiling where she's never going to be more popular than where she is right now right um, we have yeah 19 points where and we haven't even been on air she's been on air for six weeks here you know it's it's a privilege to uh, win your three-way primary by 70 roughly percent and then immediately have cook saboteau and 538 i'll say it's now a lean republican district but it's 538 mm-hmm. so I, I immediately just dis- discredit it. it's probably wrong all yeah. of it yeah, <laughs> right. it's right. probably it. all wrong <laughs> anyway assault. exactly right. But then it's another thing to say, hey, when we start talking with folks who are already in our district, it, it's motivating to them to know that we're running. Um, I think the best thing we got out of that poll was some guy who didn't even notice. He's like, I've heard Zach Nunn speak, and I'm a Democrat, but he's like the old school Reagan Republican. He'll talk to everybody. He'll listen to everybody, and he doesn't try and bullshit you. Dude, that's um, about as high praise as you can I, get. I, yeah. I'll take that as my epitaph. In your, in your district, if a Democrat's saying that, that is a hell of a, hell of a high I'm praise. I'm privileged by that. Right. That's awesome. So before you go, what's the booze that you brought us here? Hey, this is a this is, and I know this is a, a bourbon broadcast. Well, no, we're kind of in we all got, of we got the a above. Little, little uh, vodka sampler here from an Iowa uh, distillery called Revelton. This is in my district. Uh, it's just south, south of us. So when you are from the state fair, it's about an hour south. We got um, my favorite here is the honey flavored whiskey that uh. comes with it. Uh, so whiskey vodka. Are you gonna onesie that thing? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, down, I'm gonna down, down. Hey, I, I, I gotta take a flight later, so we are just gonna like can't, can't take it in the carry on. Yeah, you may wanna you um, wanna give us that on loan so and, you can take it back. Yeah, with absolutely. You. We'll, we'll we'll leave it for you here. But this is a this is a great story of a distillery uh, in the district that had been a winery it was gonna shut down. Um, it was gonna close down the area, and a couple of Iowans decided that they were going to learn how to become distillers. They could have gone anywhere. Uh, and they came to Iowa, opened this thing up, saved not only the winery, but it ended up just growing and it's now become a real targeted place throughout the state. Has brought um, a lot of great press to the community. Most importantly, they're just really good people. Yeah. Um, they're, they're your heart and soul uh, Iowans. And they hired a lot of people who had been put out of work when the factories closed. So there mm-hmm. are a number of folks who would have had no other opportunity in that community but to leave. And now they get to stay there and uh, Man, distill whiskey. That's not, easy not to go. Not a bad second yeah, line. Right. That should be my choice. If I could do anything, I would distill whiskey. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds like an easy one to go to bat for. We will, we will drink it all and order more. Good call. <laughs> Uh, and it's worth noting that you get you brought a glass for us to drink it with that is Abraham Lincoln riding on a T-Rex with a M16 and a knife in his hand. That is <laughs> That is freedom, my friend. That, that is that freedom. freedom. Uh, I I don't this is a treasured glass. Yeah, I had to. I had to to be able to smug needed one, but yeah. uh, my my uh, 6-year-old daughter was like, I want that one. So, <laughs> I brought, I got her this uh, snow globe uh, and uh, she chose the T-Rex with the M16. So, I we're training it. second amendments right from birth. <laughs> <laughs> Dinosaurs, guns, freedom. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln. What is not done, to love? Done. Zach Nunn, what where can we find you? Where where uh, can yeah. we help you out? Guys, please. Thank you very much. It's not just about winning in Iowa. This is really about winning back a majority it starts with races like this check us out at zachnun.com it's z-a-c-h-n-u-n-n.com um none for congress and uh follow us yeah on on twitter and facebook we would be very humbled perfect zach nun thanks for joining us team thank you very much i appreciate it thanks ruthless